So I wanted to go live real quick and explain to you guys the five biggest mistakes that I see private label sellers making with regards to product selection. The first one that I'm seeing a lot um, is called the 7-7 method. This is being popularized by a couple of fake gurus who made it up, who have never been successful on Amazon. And all they're looking at are the number of reviews and the distribution of sales on one keyword, which doesn't make sense once you truly understand how to look at keywords. Um, and what ends up happening is that 90 to 95% of the time, you're going to end up getting into a product that's too competitive, that's risky, and you'll make the wrong decision. Uh, that brings me to the second problem. And the second mistake I see people make is that they're ignoring keywords, which is what the 7-7 method does. It ignores the fact that Amazon is a search engine. It's not just a marketplace, but people are searching for products many, many different ways. Uh, what does that mean? That means that if you ignore all the ways that people are searching and you're only ranked for a couple of them, then you're not taking advantage and meeting the demand. So if you can truly understand how to find the keywords that people are searching for, understand the search volumes of those keywords, and then analyze and see if the competitors are doing a good job at meeting that demand, then you can truly understand whether a product has uh, how much potential it has, how much risk it has, uh, and, and, and decide whether or not to do that product and have a much higher chance of success. We show you how to do that using what we call a master keyword list. And that's how we do the data analysis to determine whether we should do a product or not. And you can see that video here uh, and see exactly what that looks like. The third problem that I see uh, or mistake that I see people make is that they're not good at calculating the true profitability of a product. Yes, it's one thing to go on... 1688.com or to Alibaba. We prefer 1688. It's much more, much, usually much more direct and, and saves you a bunch of money. But even if you go to Alibaba, you look at the price in uh, on the site, that's not accounting for a lot of different costs. You have extra packaging costs a lot of times. You have to get the product to the port. You have to get it from the port to, to here. You have to bounce it off of a 3PL. Sometimes you need to relabel it or it needs to get unpacked out of a container. There's a lot of extra fees associated with that. And then you're probably going to run marketing and pay-per-click and you have extra fees there. So we use a pretty extensive uh, a spreadsheet where we plug in some numbers, the weight and dimensions and uh, some assumptions. And it gives us a really accurate idea of what our net profitability should be at different sale prices, given different uh, fulfillment fees. Now, once you fill that out, then you know whether or not the product should be profitable. The fourth mistake that I see people making is that they are ordering too many units or too few units. Now, if you look at just how well your competition is doing and maybe the best sellers, and then you make the assumption that you can duplicate that, you might order way too many units. The flip side of that is that you might look at the fifth, sixth, or eighth best sellers and say, I just want to sell that many and I'm okay with that. But the problem is if you know what you're doing and you optimize your listing and you rank well for the better keywords, more similar to the top three guys, you might end up selling way too many units and not have enough inventory. So it's important, again, that you understand how are the competitors getting their sales, whether you can duplicate that success by ranking for similar keywords. Maybe the best seller is ranked for a very generic keyword that has a lot of search volume, and that's not something that's going to be easy to duplicate. So those sales, you kind of need to back out and understand whether you can really get them. That's all complicated data and understanding how, how many units to buy, but that's the only way to do this business and have a much higher chance of success. Finally, uh, the mistake that I see a lot of people having or making is that they don't have enough capital for the business. The number one reason that I see businesses fail from just any entrepreneur, any type of business is that it's undercapitalized or underfunded. The same is true with this business. If you try to get into this business and do a product that you need a realistically need a budget of 25 or $30,000 between all of your expenses and cash flows, and then you only have five or 10,000, you're going to have a, you're going to struggle. It's going to be really hard to chase and keep ordering more inventory. And you're going to, um, you're going to end up in a position where you probably will fail. 
So it's important that you, again, you understand the proper expectations. You look at the keywords, how your competitors are getting their sales. You look at um, how many units you can realistically sell and you make sure you have enough capital to order the initial order, pay for some marketing and have a secondary order on the way and trickle it in. There are some tricks for cash flow management, like negotiating with your factory for terms, uh, spreading out those payments, spreading out, making more frequent but smaller purchases and sending them in so that you don't need as much capital up front. But it's still important that you understand how much capital. And we have a, a, a cash flow sheet that we, that we fill out to really understand how much money we're going to need for each product. And that looks something like this. Now, I hope that this was helpful. Um, it kind of digs into some of the mistakes that I know a lot of people are making. There are a lot of people out here that are teaching that aren't really successful sellers. They're just really good at selling courses and really good at marketing. And uh, just be aware of those traps. Try to dig in, understand the real data and learn from somebody that's really doing it. Happy New Year, everybody.